we, we, we had great lives uh, in the 80s, which is what, what I can remember. We were um, one, one country of about 21, 22 million people, very similar to the United States, very ethnically diverse, and uh, we had, uh, there, were, there were six different republics, so what would be considered states here, and uh, we were really all um, one, one happy place, one happy family, um, living and going on with um, our day-to-day -day lives. Oh, when it was before when we, we fell apart, the life was so beautiful. I remember, like, I was little, but I remember we all lived beautiful life. And we was all together like a, like a, like a brothers and sister, and we all enjoy life. It was, um, there wasn't, we didn't know any, um, growing up in Yugoslavia, that's all we knew about. We didn't know about, I was eight when we left, uh, Bosnia and I never even knew of the differences or possible, uh, you know, ethnic groups and whatnot. So I would say it was unknown for me. But everybody looks the same and acts the same, so I never felt any difference, nor did I care. Um, it was only till after the war started that, in my mind, the politicians used uh, people's uh, ethnicities against each other, to pit them against each other. But prior to that, there was no difference whatsoever. You know, aside from the fact that somebody celebrated Ramadan and somebody celebrated Easter. The, the, the war, there were, there were several probably key events. One, Cold War came to an end. Tito, um, Marcia Tito died in 1980. And, and essentially, for, for, for lack of a better word, there wasn't really any, any need for Yugoslavia to continue to exist as, as, it, as it was. Um, and, and so uh, that was kind of combined with the fact that uh, individual states or individual republics now elected leaders who wanted to to kind of wear their own own agendas and wanted to uh, want the greater independence and greater power from the federal government uh, add that uh, on the top of already a very volatile region with a lot of history uh, religious differences cultural differences and and you have a perfect mix for a, a powder cake waiting to explode which is exactly what happened So, so none of us really believed that this was going to happen. Uh, I was there uh, in the summer, the entire summer of 1990, from early June through the end of August. And half of that time I spent in, in, in Croatia. I was in Dubrovnik for a couple of weeks, split Zagreb and the island of Brač, visiting different friends and just, just having a good time. And uh, well, well, I could tell, sense that there were some changes. This was at a time when Tuđman was already elected. There wasn't really, at least not on the surface, anything obvious to indicate that less than a year from from that time there was going to be this very bloody, bloody conflict. And, uh, but before the war started, uh, do you know, people start talking and presidents, you know, they start talking, oh, they're going to be war, they're going to, but we couldn't believe it because how they can happen that when is we all love each other, we are all friends, you know. There are of course always some crazy people in all every every all all, all of the sides, Croatian, Serbia, Bosnia. There are always some crazy people, but basically we love each other. We are always all together. We were so happy, you know. And then that starts, you know, uh, that war and little by little, little by little. And then when they start putting the barricade on the on the road on different places of Croatia, first they start. We couldn't believe it. And then they say. First, a police officer Croatian was killed, and then we say, "Oh my God, yeah, what is this?" And little by little, they, 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 they just started recruiting, and then there was the war. First, they started in Croatia. It was really bad. When it started happening, you know, it was the start spring summer of '91. At first, you know, it was like, "Well, is it just maybe incidents? Are there are there things that are really triggering this, or is this going to be a bigger conflict?" And and uh, sure enough, before, right before we knew it, it just started um, going on first in Croatia, and then, and then everybody was always like, "Well, it can never happen in Bosnia because that place is so ethnically diverse and so intertwined." And sure enough, it happened there as well. So, what we didn't think could happen ended up happening, uh, unfortunately, and at, at a great cost and loss of human lives.
It was absolutely a surprise. Um, when my dad talks about his experience, he never believed that it was going to come, you know, to that point. People talked about possible, you know, um, possibilities of war happening, but he just never believed it, and uh, it came to a complete surprise. I mean, I don't believe uh, to be more in Gaza. I don't. Uh, I don't have. Uh, I give one percent chance for war mm -hmm. because Bosnia is country, mixed country. Nobody know who's uh, Muslim, who's uh, Croatian, who's uh, Serbs. Everybody have respect for each other, help each other. Yeah, yeah, I, I do remember, well, I'll tell you what, the, the morning that it all started going down, uh, what happened is, is uh, Serbian forces surrounded the city uh, overnight. And in the morning when I woke up, there were barricades all throughout the city. So we were all told to stay in our houses or apartments and not to go out because the, the Serbian forces have, have occupied and surrounded the city. And then, you know, as, as, as weeks went into months, uh, it got more and more serious and there was more, uh, there was more, you know, fighting. You would hear more gunshots, grenades going up. Our, our city was basically under siege and each couple of weeks it got worse and worse and more people were killed. Yeah, my personal experience, uh my city didn't affect that much. I have experience of what I have. Uh, it's gonna be like when it was the Yugoslavian army the hunting the airplane it was uh, twice. One, one time they dropped the bomb, I think. And uh, I was at the school that day and there was like siren all that you need to go to the shelter, you know. And then first time uh, all together, the whole school, everybody, it was just running in the shelter. Like, that was my first experience, but for me it was a joke, you know, because I was, like, when they started I was 14 years old, I didn't realize that, you know, and then I still don't, I don't hate anybody, and then all my friends who was close to me, they didn't hate each other, you know, for us this was not like, we didn't realize that that is war. The most impactful moment that I remember is my, uh, my cousin's, um, a grandmother came over to visit us and she, um, you know, just came over for lunch on like a quiet day. There wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of, you know, gunfire that day. So she came over and stayed about an hour and uh, then she left to go back to um, her house. And on the way back, uh, and while she was opening the door of her house, she was shot and killed by a sniper. Now I didn't, I didn't witness this. I just, 15 minutes after she left, we got a call that she was killed by, uh, by a sniper. And I, I then, as a kid, that's what made it real for me, is that I just spoke to somebody, and 15 minutes later, they are dead because they were shot in the head by a sniper. Uh, and she's an, she was an old lady. She wasn't a threat to anybody. She just happened to be on the wrong side. And, uh, and a Serbian sniper shot her in the head. And that's when I realized how serious the situation really is. The first shots were fired in April of 1992. Uh, in, in Bosnia, and we left in July, I think it was. So I just heard stuff and saw stuff on TV, but never, never in person. Um, it was definitely tough. Um, it was um, kind of it's hard to explain, but you would receive phone calls every couple of months from uh, family members or friends. So uh, other than seeing stuff and getting information from TV. There really wasn't anything else other than waiting for these phone calls. And these phone calls were tough because you, you're, you're receiving a phone call and you don't know whether it's good news or bad news. You know, if it's somebody telling you that they're okay or if they're reporting that you know, a loved one is no longer with us. You know, it's just very unfortunate that all, all those lives have to be lost to, for, for, to, to essentially, you know, get back to some some to where we are today, so I, you know, not, not really clear what all got accomplished other than, uh, you know, now we have a bunch, bunch more new states and new countries that are independent. But I, I just want to mention that was, in all these three sides, was, uh, there was 
although with some people who they doesn't like each other, but we are supposed to love each other because we are all the same people. You know? We are all, all everybody the same. Whatever people say is someone no we are not, no, we are all the same. We are only different because we are some people is Muslims and people is a Christian Catholic and some person is a Christian Orthodox, but everything else is the same. Because how if we live more than a couple hundred years together and this just just different is religion, how you can be different? I feel terrible because we're fighting. Even even if there was this happening, if you ask me it's better will be just to separate without war, without anything, without killing to friend. You know, because in some part of Croatia and Bosnia was friends killing each other, you know. They playing together and next day they come and they wanna kill each other. That was terrible, terrible. And it's senseless. It's it's absolutely uh, it's mind boggling how such a war could happen in a place where growing up as a kid I, I never knew of these differences. And it's it's frustrating. I basically see it as you know, if you look at the Balkan region as an onion and you start peeling away, you know, layers of it, uh, if you go back 3,000 years before any of the major religion came to, to life, you basically have the same people that live within that region for thousands and thousands of years, but yet these differences came about from these people bringing different religions to the area. So it's that's why I call it so senseless. It's the same people that just, whether they accept it or they were forced to accept different religions, they classified it now as different ethnic groups. Before the war, you know, everyone got along, and we and 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 it wasn't evident, you know, it wasn't evident who was which ethnicity. You know, it was, it was, it was, a, I feel like ethnicity and religion was a tool used by the people in power to get what they want and to pin people against each other who are not that different to begin with. So I guess, I guess the message I take away from it is that, is that people can be easily manipulated when it comes to religion. People, the people's ethnicities and backgrounds have, be, has, have been used and are going to continue being used in the future uh, to, to, to set them set them against each other for the gains of those at the top, and essentially, in a way, we were all uh, victims of a political war uh, that 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 went wrong.